Morning, Chappers. Morning, sir. How's the captain? Yes, jolly good. Family all right? Yes. Stowed any ports recently? Good Lord, Tattinger puts faith in fizz in English wine. I, have you read this report on the fresh talk overtake of the Adam Crozier lease broadcast less reliant on advertising? Can't say I have, old boy. Neither could I. Good Lord, Chappers. Have you seen that Shergold guitars have started making guitars again? No. Yes, and they're right here now. You're absolutely kidding me. How was Indonesia, old boy? Well, got bitten to death and half eaten by tigers, ate nothing but rice for a month, but you know, I felt jolly great afterwards. I spent 17 years in the tropics, you know. Gadzoops, chappers! <laughs> I haven't seen a guitar quite like that since sometime in the 70s or the 80s. No, I remember my time in Indonesia through the tropics when I was avoiding snakes, spiders, scorpions, Theresa May, tigers, rhinoceros and alligators, but I hope she doesn't. And I found myself at the midst of the bottom of a volcano surrounded by rosewood forests. And I would be unsure as to whether or not this rosewood came from such a forest, but I would wager a bet that it does. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Shergold guitars. Way back in the day, in the 70s and the 80s, sort of really as a consequence of uh, imported guitars from America being somewhat hard to come by, uh, one or two British... Now, sir. Hmm? I'm sorry, one or two British manufacturers, Shergold being probably one of the more famous, um, became quite popular uh, in the UK with artists such as Mike Rutherford and Joy Division and other such type players. <laughs> Gosh. What, that boy? An article here saying that uh, Shergold guitars are being put back into production. Shergold? I thought your last dog was Shergold. <laughs> Absolutely, what a horse was. I shot that and buried it years ago and took the insurance money. But no, Shergold guitars from Mike Rutherford fame back in the 70s and the 80s. And Isn't he a British gentleman of fame? British gentleman. British, and Isles British the guitars, Queen. weren't they? Good mm. Lord, who'd have thought it? Who would have thought it? Now, sadly, at some point in the 80s or some such time, uh, Shergold uh, became less popular and ceased production. That is until, of course, 2017, where the wonderful people at Barnes & Mullins, in collaboration with the expertly, uh, what's the correct word? Craythorn, uh, no, no, no. Hang on, let me first. Kirkle Vivington, no. Um, Warsaw. No. Luncheon. No. With the uh, wonderfully, yes, talented Patrick James Eggle, decided to uh, reinvent or re-release uh, with some modern tweaks uh, the Shergold brand. And the you know, it shows. Patrick's touch, his golden touch, shows upon these because it's not Sher bronze, it's not Sher silver, it's Sher gold. And <laughs> it's Nick Old Sher singer. You That's can, what it is. <laughs> You can smell the gold simply with the application of one's nose upon the fretboard. There are three models in the re-released Shergold range of masqueraders masquerading as the following guitars. Um, one has 
three single coil pickups on it, which is the one that Mr. Chapman has, um, two regular single coil Seymour Duncans, and then a stacked one in the bridge. This one here that I'm holding has two single coil pickups and a Seymour Duncan humbucker. And uh, this one here has a Seymour Duncan P90 and a Seymour Duncan humbucker at the bridge. I had a stacked hand in bridge recently and almost won Ronald Bingley's hand off his own face. Good <laughs> Lord! Would never have believed it. <laughs> I certainly don't. I'm a big fan of these Tetris inlays. It's like, so, it's like they're Tetrising. Well, that is, without a doubt, it's... Um, most glowing feature, in my opinion, is the fact that the neck is made from a lump of rosewood. Um, reminiscent a little of things like the Music Man guitars, where, you know, they often do solid rosewood neck guitars. It has a certain feel and look and tone to it. Um, and of that course, you just it don't comes get. at an, ex an extraordinary expense of cost. It takes such a long time to compact that many roses down into such a narrow space as to that would hold the. The, the anchor scale, firm in its toughness. Scores highly on the anchor scale. Of course it should do. Um, 25, 25 and a half inch scale length, locking tuners with rather attractive black ebony, I believe. Mm. Let me smell. As yeah. other um, brands from Barnes and Mullins have also been famed to do. The bridge is designed by Patrick James Eggle. I do like it when a man uses his middle name to be referred to. It gives a certain gravitas, I think. And such as yours would be? Sinjin, obviously. Of course. Lee Sinjin Anderson. Very British, although not at all. Robert Sutherland, faux Scotsman Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> From the clan of Chapman. Um, <laughs> all of these... Now, the, the, that clever chap, Patrick James Egel, um, Copied has designed a bridge hat. where it's a little bit like uh, <clears throat> a Telecaster-style bridge with these three uh, bullet-shaped... I do like a good bullet, especially when you're in Indonesia. In a rabbit's head. Absolutely. Just before you stew Ooh, it, skin yes, off. Yes, I do love a good bullet. Um, the bridge encapsulates, for want of a better word, the, uh, the bridge pickup, mm. uh, which I think sometimes on a Telecaster does add to that zinginess that you would get from the tone. Um, Just like a good gin and tonic. Indeed. <laughs> It's a mahogany body. It has a sort of a, it has an attempt at a heel calf, mm. albeit not necessarily quite as ergonomic as some designs that you might see. It is rather like they went, oh, let's do a fancy heel joint, but stop at the heel joint. Yes. <laughs> let's, let's, let's create some space for where your hand wouldn't be, but then not for <laughs> where it might be. <laughs> but that's okay, because I kind of think with these guitars, it's probably, you know, the action. And when I'm talking about the action, I mean the real action, not the height of the strings. Not from the club on Denmark is, Street. Is, is likely to be down, you know, the, the, this end of the neck rather than up this end of the neck. But you never know. Um, it's a strung through body. I can tell from the multicoloured ball ends on the strings that they are Daddario strings. Mm, fine strings. Fine, fine strings. Uh, I have a five-way switch. I have a one, two, three, four, five-way switch. And on this model, is a three-way switch, which of course it should be, as it only has two pickups. Should we hearken to the dulcet tones therein, 
of these rosewood-laden beasts. Do you find the headstock on this guitar slightly disconcerting? It looks like a spade. From, ah, yes. From whence one would be digging one's garden to grow vegetables, vegetables, before the war. Or a rifle stock. A rifle which stock. Which makes me feel rather at home, I remember, yes. In fact, go on, Rob, just hold it like this. Just point it. Breathe in. And which tiger? Squeeze the trigger, yes, absolutely. Right between its stripy bastard eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Sinjent and Sutherland's uh, famous branded tiger skin gloves would never have existed if it wasn't for Captain's famous shooting eye, which he developed in the tropics many, many, many years ago. I knew it was a mistake to abandon the horse. <laughs> there you go, Rob. There's the headline. What do you think the story is? Uh, the story here is, it looks to me as if this new brand, Sure Gold, is making these incredible new guitars, and they're based in England, of all places. It might be useful to know that I'm going through a Red Dwarf. Excellent. And politically correctly named Red Dwarf, absolutely. The RD1 from the British Ooh. amplifier company, Victory. We've stayed British. Victory. British. 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 It's a little bit like the sexual intercourse I've partaken upon with my wife, you know. It starts off slow and builds up gradually and ends up sort of in a loop. In an enormous, frantic crescendo. Yes. Good Spew Lord. the fish, duplicate the DNA, off we go. <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous. Well, it's good to know that there'll be a little chapter and tiny feet running around on this planet long after we're gone. Um, I'm going to show you my guitar. Not that it's terribly uh, dissimilar to, to Rob's, although I'm using a different guitar amplifier and a different pedal on the floor.
I don't really gent, I'm afraid. I might be a gentleman, but I don't gent. That riff you played before from the band with Freddie Mercury and Theresa May. Ah, yes. That was a tremendously good riff. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, we haven't talked colours. No, but of course it's always a difficult topic to talk about, you know. Well, absolutely, but times are changing and I think we can be a bit, open, a bit more open about it. It doesn't have yes. to just be, you know, all black and white anymore. I would like to think anymore. society has changed and people are accepting of more colours. For I example, should grey really well hope so. Grey, grey, which to be totally honest with you, you know, is fairly akin to my skin colour most mornings before I put my makeup on. But there <laughs> we are. All three models are available in grey, cherry and... Sort of a trans black, mm, it's a tr and my absolute favourite colour of all, which we don't have here but is about to appear on screen, Dirty Blonde. This is a genuine letter from Angus Fryer, Drayton in Somerset. Sir, I used to lose my pea and bean seeds to mice. A local <laughs> farmer advised me to sow the seeds deep down. <coughs> I now sow all my pea and bean seeds four inches down, and I never lose one. Fantastic advice. Thank you, Angus Fryer from Drayton in Somerset. Would, well, you like to, would you like to try this guitar? You know, I think like Johnny Mullwood do. Good. And I think, to be honest, you could do the people credit and actually sort of, you know, I, I know this has been a, a deeply interesting... Um, well, we do bring the facts and figures. Lee, yes, absolutely. Uh, 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 and um, <laughs> Gosh, I've had a Boris moment. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I certainly think it's that we should mention, we should absolutely mention absolutely mention that the rosewood necks and fingerboards on these guitars give the, the guitars a distinct feel. A distinct and unique feel. No. Hang on, let me phone. Unique? No. No? A di no, no, no. A, dis <laughs> a distinct and unique feel. Yes! Good lord, this language is difficult to grasp sometimes. Who would have thought it? And I, it's hard to tell if there's a, a tonal impact of having a rosewood neck. I mean, it doesn't sound to me desperately different to uh, a guitar that perhaps might have a rosewood fingerboard and a maple neck, but it definitely has. You know, for me... I love the feel. It's got <clears throat> that sort of... It's got that sort of real wood feel. Like a good tobacco, Shergold is a wondrous blend of tone, flavour, and, of course, lung disease. I should clarify, you can't get lung disease from playing the guitar, only from smoking tobacco. Then. Time for tea, cakes and scones. Is it 11? It is. 11s is. Marvellous. Do you know when these guitars were originally released, uh, pre-decimalisation, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they used to cost uh, £23, four guineas, six pence, half a shilling and a crown and a tuppence. And worth every single second of Absolutely forest sweat labour, I'm sure. every single one. But nowadays, now that we've gone over to the pound and we have a hundred pennies in the pound and no such things as farthings and crowns and things like that, um, one of these guitars will set you back somewhere around about the £750 mark. My goodness, golly gracious me, that's a fantastic honest you, price. I'll be completely honest with you. Let me just check my stocks and shares. 
I've literally made that in the time it took me to reach for my phone. Well, so I'm going to be buying one of these. In fact, give it another three seconds. I'm going to buy two. My giddy aunt would probably appreciate one also. Good for her. Well, How you know, is your giddy aunt? She, she's getting better. Marvellous. After the accident, of course, which was terrible. Which was terrible. It was a yeah. tragedy. Yes, we should have shot that tiger the second we saw it. Absolutely. Right between its stripy bastard eyes. <laughs> well, you know, the audience might appreciate knowing that I've been Robert Sutherland Chapman. And I've been Lee St. John, sometimes referred to as St. John Anderton. Of course, the depending captain. on whether I'd like to be uh, known for my founding ambulance service that you often see at festivals, which I like to keep quiet, to be honest with you. So I'll go with Lee St. John Anderton. <laughs> the captain. And the he captain. bids you farewell. The captain. As do I. I was rather disappointed I never made rancor beyond captain. But, you know, such was the time I took a bullet, didn't I? I took so a bullet busy, in Burma. So busy being and, a submariner um, that he hardly got absolutely. above deck. I'll tell you that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I do love, I do love getting below deck he likes you know to me. dive yes he'll be there for hours tremendous <laughs> a lot of semen <laughs> a lot of yeah absolutely a lot love of being fish surrounded to catch. by semen <laughs> a lot of fish to catch in those depths i tell you anyway farewell everybody <laughs> oh my god Mr. Martin Humphreys, director of the London Cinema Museum was the guest speaker at a luncheon held at the Wednesday Circle Club marvellous Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. Yeah!